Hey guys, Chaps here, and it's time for another developer stream recap. This week, Dana was joined by TC's lead multiplayer designer, Jonathan Taylor. There was a lot of discussion about Ranked, and a large chunk of it was something like, yeah, we hear the feedback around XYZ, and we're looking at that. For the most part, I excluded this stuff from the recap. If you're interested, the full video is linked down below. But basically, they're reading stuff, they're working on it, and that's the point of the preseason. Anyways, let's kick it off with the actual recap. There are some things that we're looking at, so we're going to speak at a high level on certain things. A lot, of, largely because um, decisions aren't final just yet. We're kind of looking at decision A versus decision B, and uh, that path may not be 100% cemented, even if we're leaning towards one direction. So we don't want to go and say we're doing X, when in, light, when in actuality we may end up doing Y. So we don't want to go anything down that path. So this is a topic that comes up basically every week, and that's transparency. Yeah, we get it. The Coalition doesn't want to promise something until they know they can deliver. Well, just don't promise things until you know you can deliver. That doesn't mean you should stop communicating altogether. You say you're evaluating options A and B. Why not communicate those options to the community in some form? I'm sure the community would love to give feedback. Do you need to do what the community says in this feedback? No, absolutely not. But as the decision makers and the product owners, I feel that you'd be more than interested in hearing the more directed feedback from your customers. I'll stop hitting on this for now. You all know that I could rant about TC's transparency forever, but I'll just leave it at this. You guys say that you know that you need to earn our trust, and you guys say that you want to be more transparent. Well, we're waiting. You say one thing and you do the other. It's quite irritating. And then the other thing that I want to talk a little bit about before you start, and before we start answering questions, is today's Xbox event a certified extravaganza of all things at Xbox. However, we were not participating in it because we did our big news last week. Uh, initially, we were going to be as part of it for Op 4, um, but uh, it was chock full of stuff, and we wanted to get into you guys' hands uh, around uh, as, as soon as possible. So that's why we're not in it. A quick overview of why are we doing a preseason? Why didn't we just roll right in to the um, to a regular season. Basically, we ran internal simulations uh, based on production data, basically uh, matches people actually played with the old system, and then ran it through using the new system to determine kind of what the spread would look like, how long it takes you to get to masters at minimum, and like what the general like, how many people were in each rank, uh, how fast people moved up, and we had some stuff we felt pretty we're pretty good about in terms of what it looks like, uh, but we don't know until we actually have a lot of people playing with the new system. It changes the way you play a little bit. There's new players coming in that are going to change up uh, some of the data. We made some assumptions about how often people are playing that you know the real data is going to be a bit different. So a big chunk of doing the preseason is to allow us to validate that the simulations that we had and the decisions that we made were the correct ones and making sure that it's accurate enough that it can help predict what's going to happen if we make future changes. So that was like a big chunk of it, is saying, do we understand the system well enough and what happens when we make changes that we can understand like the impact it's going to have down the road? And the preseason was time to be able to do that. Um, also, just at a scale level, it's really hard to get 100,000 people at a time in there to play your game, right, when you're just trying to test it internally. So uh, there's some like stuff you can only really see when you release it to a much larger audience and see what happens when they're all touching it at the same time and all this stuff is happening, right? So there were some things there that we didn't, we thought we have all sealed up. We knew there were some bugs, and there's some stuff that's come up from the preseason that we're working to address right now. Um, yeah, so those are the two really big things, really just to test our system, find bugs in situations maybe we didn't think of or that were, you know, we didn't think were going to happen as much as they did, and now we know we need to address those. And to make sure that as we go forward, we understand what the changes we're trying to make or we are making or likely to do to the system as a whole. And, uh, yeah the scoring in certain modes like Koth. Yep. And, you know, we had our suspicions around, like, are they at that sweet spot? And we were like, man, we think they need a little bit of tweaking, but we wanted to actually just get people playing it to then kind of see, you know, where is that tweak needed to happen? Did it need to happen on one part or another part? 
Um, yeah, so we're looking at the value eliminations and costs. Um, and right now, one of the big pieces of feedback we get, and I think we were pretty clear, it was, we knew it was going to be something similar was going to happen when we released it, was players aren't really able to differentiate themselves enough in a lot of matches. There'll be players that end up around the same like 94 or 95 point area, um, and they don't feel like, even though that they were putting in more time and effort, that they're really being rewarded for that. Um, so we're looking at that closely to see if we can adjust those values to make sure we get more of that spread, um, but without like making it too difficult, uh, especially at lower ranks, to be able to to meet your personal requirements that you want to be able to meet and still be able to move up at a pace that's good for everyone, uh, based on how they're playing and how often they're winning. So, uh, but we're expanding the range at which people can match make for the early part of the season to allow spread to happen a bit more. What we're seeing, especially in um, Playlists that maybe don't have quite the same population as Koth as people that rank up are having trouble finding matches because there's not enough people in the ranks directly below them to really gather together and like put together a match as quickly. So these people that are kind of the vanguards of it and are playing a lot, they get into situations where they just can't play. And so we want to address that. Uh, that's something we knew the system was going to have a little bit of trouble with at the start. Um, there is some stuff that will be better with the next up, uh, like update that we do that will you know, allow that to not be the case at the start of the next season. Um, but for now, we're trying to find a way to allow that spread to happen earlier for a temporary amount of time to really seed those ranks with people and allow people to find matches faster. Um, and then it's based on what we're looking at for the data, it should become healthier naturally over time uh, once we allow that initial spread to happen. Um, uh, yeah, so the change is right now, it used to be one rank plus minus, and now it's two ranks plus minus. And like I said, once the spread starts to happen, we believe we can turn this off and once again go back down to one rank. So we're hoping that it's a temporary thing to allow people to um, move up and move between and find matches more uh, frequently. And then we won't need it for the long term once, once the actual population fully is spread out. I'm going to give a little bit of a tease, and this is an example of maybe where we're not ready to talk about it too much. Free for all. Uh, we were, there's some things that we're working on there. Yeah. So we're looking at one of the problems with free for all matchmaking uh, is that it requires 14 players to get started. Um, and there's a few other things about that that cause trouble, especially like I said in regions with lower populations. Um, so we're looking at a few things to uh, make adjustments to that and add more variety to free for all uh, that I think people will be excited about when they see more details. Dana, do you have any plans to do a solo queue for King of the Hill? So it's something I'm looking at. I don't think we'll be able to do a two separate queues and really have the healthy matchmaking that we want, um, especially, like I said, certain areas that are a little slower just in general due to lack of players. Um, but what I do want to look at doing is increasing the incentives for solo players and um, giving them a little bit more of a bump as they go into this queue that we know has a lot of groups in it. The idea of uncapped points. You know, basically, if I'm getting kills, I should continue to be rewarded for that type of a behavior. The situations you'd get if you had uncapped points on really anything is that there's an incentive that once you find a situation that allows you to get the max or to sit there and farm basically forever, you would do it. So, say for instance, if the elimination cap was gone, and then suddenly in King you could farm a team just at the ring over and over and over again until either they quit or like the time ran out and the match was forced to end, like that's going to be bad for the system. You're suddenly going to have somebody gain 3,000 points in a single match if you don't cap points. Um, there's just some issues there when it comes to exploitive nature. The points are geared toward if you perform well and do, or you're doing really particularly well and you win the game as fast and efficiently as possible, like, can you get up to, like, near the max points is kind of the idea. It's not meant to... Uh, we really don't want to put you in a situation where you feel like it's beneficial to do something that's not really great for your team, not really fun for the other team, and, and really just kind of feels, like, negative and exploity. And with the uncapped points, that, that's actually what we would get. The system isn't built around the concept of uncapped points. We didn't really talk about quitters. That's the only concern. Oh, yeah, we can talk about quitters. I was going to get there. I just... I, the mode one came up, but we can, we can talk about quitters. I hate quitters. Yeah. They're the stones yeah. of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also issues right now where people are getting dropped from games, as you mentioned. That's your top issues list. So, yeah, um, there's some stuff happening that is not the player's fault that they're getting punished for during preseason. Like, and we didn't know what bugs we'd have around that. Like, we are looking into that, and we have uh, issues logged against it. And hopefully, soon we'll be able to, you know, push something out that would help us fix that. And hoping, I believe, we'll be able to get it out before preseason to season. If we don't, we have to figure out if we need to extend the preseason. That would be another thing we're looking at. So looking at ways to mitigate that, um, 
we have stuff come in and future updates is focused on the quitting problem at its core. But in the short term, we're looking at ways to mitigate the impact of quitters on the team if you're a remaining player. Can we take maybe just a time out? We, you, got, you spearheaded these changes into Guardian. Do you want to talk a little bit about kind of why Guardian is different now and why we think it's so much more fun? After this week, we'll be shifting Guardian into its own quick play playlist. Uh, so you'll still be able to go in and search for, particularly for Guardian matches. Um, we're not putting it into ranked, but we are just looking to see how the population works and if there's further changes we need to do. There's some adjustments. I think we still need to some of the spawning logic and a few things about the messaging when the spawns are flipping that I'd like to address. Um, so it wouldn't be for Operation 4. It's something we would consider. I think as each operation comes in, we're going to look and see like what should be a ranked mode in this operation based on what the modes we have available are and what people are interested in playing. Do you want to just maybe just kind of reiterate what, what's going on with TDM a little bit there? Yeah, so we have some uh, internal changes we're, we're prepping and uh, working to test. And then once we get those to a state that we're happy with, we'll bring those out as a uh, featured playlist, uh, either using the beta dev playlist or its own uh, featured mode for that week. Um, and yeah, so once we have more to talk about there, I will. But I think there are some adjustments that are going to improve the competitive nature of it and solve not solve, alleviate some of the problems that we've seen that we've made us really not want to put it into ranked quite yet. Um, so we're still just, we're looking at those like we mentioned. I think it was Tuesday. I talked a little bit about more about that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to be able to share details, but um, the dev team needs to get to a place where we actually understand timelines a bit better. We're aware of the map rotation um, on the social TDM. Uh, that is something that uh, I believe that was actually flagged as our known issues. Uh, as something that I didn't we're looking at. see it on that list. Maybe it was there. I scanned that earlier. Oh, I thought yeah. it was a quickly, uh, quickly map selection or something like that. Anyway, uh, that is something that we're looking at. Uh, uh, I believe it's uh, it is on the list of things to be addressed. So, um, uh, so yes, we're there. Why is bronze free? Why is bronze free? Yeah, so it's to allow people to start getting into the rank system and see how it works. Um, if you don't make your way through bronze, it just means you didn't play enough to win and, or you didn't just get enough personal points to move through it. So it isn't super, super fast, but we do want to give people a bit of a runway to start to understand the mode as they get started in it um, and make it, you know, for the first rank or so, something where it's not going to be as um, punishing if you're a newer player to it. Like there are some bronze players that needs to not be punishing to that bronze player. Um, it's something we're looking at, though. Uh, we don't want to put a situation, we don't want to create a situation where people are feeling free to quit because they don't lose any points for it. They just lose their personal value and they don't necessarily see much uh, worry about the ban that they get for it. So I, I don't want to put it, we're watching it carefully to make sure the health is good. So far it's been, it's good. It's not perfect. Quitters are a thing for sure, uh, but we don't think it's uh, because of that. Um, do you see a scenario by which we would return to the uh, kills and down scoring versus eliminations as a, you know, some of the stuff that we're hearing and people are saying is because of eliminations, I do the majority of the work, somebody lands a wayward pellet and they get kind of credit for it as well. Is that something that you see, uh, you know, is that a change that we're considering or is that sort of ship sailed and, and we're kind of, we're, we're committed to that in, now? The ship hasn't sailed uh, for the future. Rob 4, there, I don't see us making that change. It's something we're continuing to evaluate, um, but it's nothing I've actually like landed on. This is a strong reason to shift over to it. There was actually some, originally in the design, that was the uh, way it was set up. It was based on kills and assists, and there were some problems with that. There's also some issue with the legacy of Gears and how it's credited kills and deaths that we needed to look at, and so we're looking at how we would make that work along with the rank system, make sure it's clean and we don't uh, break anything when it comes to people's expectations of the game. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't dismiss it out of hand, but uh, it wouldn't be anything that would happen during out four time frame. So is there a scenario where we could see uh, like traditional scoring as well as Gears Point scoring, or would that just be a muddled UI? So it's something we're considering when it comes to how MVP is calculated, um, and some other little pieces of the rank system that I think are not shining as much as they can. I don't think we'd put both on the scoreboard at the same time, um, necessarily. We but it's something we, I don't need to continue to look at. 
um, that kind of ties back into that whole discussion of how do I differentiate myself from the teammates that are close to me? How do I prove that I did better? How do I feel like MVP means MVP? And there's some stuff there, I think, that um, we've lost with this shift to new system, and we need to work to get back into it. Yeah. Do you want to maybe just talk a little bit about, at a high level, like what is the focus of the next ba- of the developer playlist? Um, just kind of what we're looking at, because it's a big one, mm-hmm. and, and then more details will be coming. Yeah, so I think at a high level, what we're looking at is um, bringing more styles of play, or at least bringing the validity of more styles of play up when it comes to Nasher combat, um, and just like some things with the Lancer as well. So it's it's looking at uh, some changes with bullet magnetism. It's looking at some changes with a few different like uh, elements of speed. It's looking at a few other changes. I think like once we have the full blog post up, people will be able to nerd out about. Um, I don't want to put too much out there in case speculation starts to fly but so we'll have more details on that i think if we can get that blog up on tuesday or so dana like i'm happy to do another thursday stream or do something next week so um yeah so i think it's going to be a a process just to let folks know we have we're playing it internally right now uh we we're happy and excited about how it feels and we feel like that it has a lot of promise but uh we need to be able to give it time to be able to work with tuning once we get it into the, the dev environment or the uh, dev playlist. Yeah. Um, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, like, the, I think the thing to drive home, and I'll try to do this as we talk about it each time, is it's not, I don't think people are going to pop in immediately and, like, understand it and feel it perfectly. Uh, it's going to take some time playing it, and it's going to take some time for us to, like, parse the feedback and really just make sure that the tuning is where it needs to be. Um, but yeah, I'll just kind of leave it there because uh, mm-hmm. as we have details and numbers to give you, we, we want to share a lot more. So we're putting together a blog post. The first one might be a tease, and the second one will have probably more for detail, full details. But it'll have values that we're changing. It'll have before and after screenshots and, and those sort of things to be really transparent about what we're trying to bring in. And I don't expect this to be a playlist we put up for a week and then we're like, we're happy and we're going to put it in. I think it's going to take a while. Um, to really get feedback from the community and make sure it's the direction that we should be going in. I'm quite excited about it. It's actually the most fun I've had uh, in Gears multiplayer, playing it internally in our dev playlists. So I think other players will like it too. It is an adjustment that needs to be made. So we want to make sure we're not um, making something that's going to, you know, people will come in and be like, everything's broken immediately. There is some changes that it'll, it'll, it'll mean for gameplay. So I will call out because it's been brought up and we turned it on early and we turned it off. This will include the changes to health regen while wall balancing and the changes to the um, brief period of time where magnetism is turned off after you've been sliding and wall balancing um, that I think will help with some of those consistencies. But it will include other things that uh, don't make those things, you know, too powerful. It doesn't make it where, you know, people that are wall balancing like crazy and just like hip firing are the only way to actually get kills and you can never do anything to kill them. We don't want to put ourselves in that situation. If we make an in-depth forum post including multiple suggestions for improvement from different players, what are the odds that TC will see them? Uh, hi. Uh, you know, we're on the forums and we're there and we're reviewing them, so throw them in there. And again, just because we see them uh, and, and, and doesn't mean, you know, all of those things are important. They feed, back, they feed into our perception on what we should prioritize inside of working on the game. They, all of those things get impacted into that. Um, that being said, just because we see them doesn't mean we're going to take them in or doesn't mean other things as part of that as well. So, uh, uh, but if you do have suggestions, the forums, uh, Reddit, those places are great. Tagging me or, or, or Jonathan on Twitter are, is nice. Um, those <laughs> conversations are very, very fleeting, especially for me where I get tagged in a lot of dialogue. And if it's during the day and I'm working, sometimes I, I don't, there's an entire conversation thread that happens that I'm not even privy to. So it's not like I, you know, the forums are, or, and Reddit are, are, are really great because those ones, the, the, the conversation becomes a little bit more robust. Even if we're not participating, we are reading them. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think that's good to mention too. I try to respond to ones I can quickly, um, yeah. but I am trying to read any posts that I'm tagged in. Yeah. So thank you for that. Thank you for bringing up the concerns you have. Same thing with true of the forums. Like I'm a lurker there for the most part, occasionally pop up, but I'm I'm reading most of the time, yeah. uh, and on Reddit. So like if you guys are posting on any of those three areas, uh, it's occasionally YouTube comments, which I often regret, but you know it's YouTube for you. I think <laughs> the YouTube um, comments are that's a that, that that's a pool that's difficult to wave into wade into sometimes. <laughs> yeah, um, I try not to spend too much time on this, but just to say we are out there, we are reading, uh, even if we don't respond to everything. Yeah. Um, we're also working really hard, so 
thank you for the patience <laughs> as we read through and try to respond to some things. Uh, no, there are not going to be weapon skin rewards for the preseason. I believe there are going to be Gears coins, but I need to quadruple check that. So uh, you will get your Gears coins as you level up, I think, but uh, definitely won't be uh, weapon skin rewards for the preseason. And for those of you that are asking about weapon, we your weapon skin rewards from Operation 3, uh, as unfortunately with always, there's a few uh, uh, ones that people that slip through the crack, uh, we go and let it settle down and then we do a data scrub and they do get allocated afterwards. So if you haven't received them yet, please be patient. Oh yeah, the high GP button. I've heard this one a few times too. Yeah, we're working on giving you a UI toggle. Uh, it, if it was super, super simple to push as just an update, we would. Um, so it actually requires a little bit of work to be able to give you that toggle. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that we should be able to get uh, in time for at least the next operation. Uh, pushing for sooner, but we have a lot of stuff on our plate. I like this one. Can you add an option to view the scoreboard post game? Right now, we only get a few seconds to view it, and then it's gone forever. Yep. So we talked about in, uh, improving like the last match button, as well as adding something to your post match to bring the scoreboard back up. It's on the UI team's radar now, so they're looking. Um, like I said, it's just really prioritizing it with the big stack of things we want to address and where that actually fits. I think that's in that same category as like seeing your ribbons and you know for fun like full functioning war journal, more stats on damage done, and comparing yourself to your friends and like all the stuff that you know I used to enjoy doing quite a bit that we don't currently have full functionality for. So it's something we are looking at. Um, we have to weigh that against like the core like priorities of what we're trying to do with you know rank system and and make sure that you know obviously there's stuff on PVE side that will take precedent as well. Um, but those things aren't lost on us. Like we are thinking about them and we are trying to make sure they're staying tracked and we can get them scheduled. So. This is something that we had in Gears 3 and Judgment and possibly Gears 2 as well. I can't remember. I remember people posting about this in the Gears 4 days wondering why it was gone and asking the Coalition to bring it back. I'm sure it's not a super simple thing to update post-launch, but this is another one of those small quality of life improvements that probably would have been pretty easy to add between Gears 4 and Gears 5. After the feedback in Gears 4, I... Personally, was surprised that we didn't see it in Gears 5. I'm really curious as to if this feature got punted or if they just didn't know that people wanted it. Have we talked about um, a visual indicator for spawn protection? I know we've talked about it. Mm -hmm. what, has there been internal conversations about that? Yeah, we've had it a few times. Um, actually, it's come up usually at the start of each project. Like, hey, you want anything else for spawn protection? Um, We've had a few things we've tried that actually made it worse in some ways, where if you could tell the spawn protection was there, people would wait to the very moment that it faded, and <laughs> it gave them a clear indication, like, now I can shoot this guy. Um, a lot of times players, when they react, when they get shot, even if they're not taking damage, they'll just go into cover and their spawn protection will wear off, and then suddenly it just like leaves them clearly vulnerable, and so there's some problems there too. I think there's some stuff we need to look at all together with how spawn protection works. Obviously, it's not a good uh, feeling when you're guarding a heal and escalation or a king of the hill ring and somebody has spawn protection long enough to make it to the ring. Like those situations are never great, and there's a few other things that happen with that that can be pretty frustrating for both sides. So we've talked about both having a visual indicator, um, something I think we're, st we're still playing around with the idea, but don't have. We had some issues with it in the past that we need to address, and we're also looking at ways to make sure if somebody has bomb protection longer than they should for some reason, that if they start shooting and doing damage, that they don't have like invulnerability in that case. Yeah, I think I think once you shoot, like all weapons, all, all weapons, all bets are off at that point. You're you know, ready to kind of, you've engaged the fight. Yeah, I think um, once you shoot and actually like do damage maybe part of it, but like we have to like look at that and there's like a line there because like I said, some players hop out of spawn, like just shoot a lancer bullet toward a guy and then suddenly spawn protection's off and they're dead in two seconds. So there's stuff there, there's balance to be had. Um, I agree, it's hard right now with just the sound. The sound's not really like, doesn't tell people much, especially players that aren't familiar with the game. They don't even know what that little sound means. So it's an issue that's on our list, but it's not something that, you know, we have anything to address in the short term. So how does TC feel with Gears 5 right now? Like we're excited for the response for Operation 4. Obviously, put a lot of time and effort into it and worked really, really hard to make sure we have something I think is a good foundation, both for ranked as well as PvE and in general, just the experience players have when they open the game and, and pop into play every day. Um, that said, like we obviously know there's more to do. Like So we're not like done yet. Uh, so we're working really hard at the next batch of things we need to do to really finish out that foundation and, and really provide the experience we wanted you to have since the launch of the game in some ways. 
Um, so yeah, I think overall we're hopeful and optimistic based on the response of what we've done so far. And we're working hard to just continue on that same track and, and keep delivering improvements to the experience. Yeah, and I should say, like, I mean, I think I'm okay to speak for the team and say, like, thank you for all the feedback from everybody. And thank you for the response. And thank you for playing. Like, it's been great to see yeah. the game just be a lot more alive than it has been previously. And we're getting a lot of good information from everyone that's playing. So I thank you for that. If you're posting on the forums and giving your opinion on things and asking questions, it's really, really helpful. It helps guide our team a little bit, too, in terms of what people are considering. Maybe brings up stuff that we haven't had a chance to think about when we're really close to it. So thank you for participating. Uh, are you guys looking into being stuck on cover? It ha it's happening a lot. So, I actually talked to Jim Bob about this today. <laughs> Basically, what ends up happening is you slide into cover, uh, and you're in cover. Um, if you're holding down, you can roadie run along cover now. And if you actually want to get out of cover, tap your... Uh, I, I play tournaments, so tap your LB or tap your A to get up that way. And the reason why we did that was to prevent uh, misrolling out of cover and, and such like that. So play a little bit with the controls. It's literally just you, because now it's allowing the roadie run without the miss rolling. So I was playing, um, um, uh, testing it out on uh, exhibit and uh, running back and forth on one of the, the wider covers. And I was playing with, with Jim Bob about that. And then uh, once you pop off, it makes it a little bit easier. So the sticky cover that you're, that you're experiencing, because I was experiencing the same thing, uh, it was fixed in, in op four. And or talked about an op four and um, as, as 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 an update. Um, I don't I don't think it kind of really resonated as well as it it, it caught on because there was so much information. So but let's just clarify, Dan. Are you saying it's a bug we're going to address or it's something? No, it has been fixed now. So basically, what there was is there's a little. We're hoping there's like there's not really a UI fix, but you just now just try tapping your A, and we're looking at um, something that. Uh, it will make that a little bit more clear. But that's kind of where we are right now and there's conversations about, is that something we need to communicate better in game? So this wasn't a super clear answer. From what I understand, the cover has felt more sticky since Operation 4 launched. I haven't really experienced this myself, but that seems to be what I'm hearing from people. And now we have Dana over here saying it's a feature that was implemented in Operation 4, it's not a bug. It sounds like their proposed solution is to make that feature better known by improving the visibility of the symbol. If I'm understanding correctly, it doesn't really seem like it's the direction we should be going. I don't really remember hearing people about accidentally rolling when they were in cover before the update, and I'm certainly hearing a lot of people complain about the sticky cover now. I think in this instance, the solution is worse than the actual issue. Oh, and I can't help but add, you know what solution would also have fixed this issue, as well as others, with basically no unintended side effects? How about a dedicated roll button? You know, that thing people have asked for since at least the Gears 2 days. Oh, have you con oh, I like this. Have you considered implementing mixtape social matchmaking like Halo and Titanfall 2 where you search for multiple modes at once? That way you can keep population modes around. So, like, I'm willing to play Execution, Guardian, as well as Free For All. Throw me mm -hmm. to match whatever one comes first. So, so we have, a like, the grab bag used to be that, and we trimmed it down. I'm looking at it again. I think there's some, like, ways to bring back stuff that people want to play but don't want to play all the time that would work for the grab bag. So I'm investigating that for quick play, uh, playlist changes. Um, we don't have like the checkbox matchmaking and something we've talked about and we've looked at. Um, it's something we'll probably continue to consider, especially as we move from uh, after we get ranked into a really good place, I want to turn more attention to custom and quick play matches and what we can do to improve the quality of life there. So I don't have a firm answer for you. We have a few different things kicking around we've talked about. Uh, in the short term, we'll probably be expanding the list that are actually in the grab bag, as well as changing a few things out when it comes to which modes have individual quick play lists. Um, but as we get that settled, hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll be able to talk about that a bit more. It would be cool if they implemented this. The main thing I want to comment on is Dana's reaction to the question with the surprised, Oh, I like this one. I know for a fact that they've discussed this on the stream before. I think it was with Ryan. So, yeah, it's not a great look when the lead community person gives the impression that they're not remembering fan feedback that they've discussed before. Uh, will you guys add FFA to Pahanu? You think that's big enough? Uh, maybe for <laughs> Pahanu, uh, for, for uh, Nashers only? Uh, it might be a little just, crazy. Just tell them to wait and see on that one. For just going, wait and so. see. <laughs> this response really makes me think that the free-for-all changes they discussed earlier means that they're bringing it to standard maps. They've talked about decreasing the player count, and it's hard to really do that on the existing maps. They haven't been introducing new free-for-all maps, a sign that they don't need more, 
and they've said that there's some other free-for-all changes coming that people will like. So yeah, I'm guessing free-for-all will be on standard maps at some point during this operation. Oh, why was the flashbang reintroduced? This was something that you were kind of part of this process. But uh, the stun is kind of key to being able to break setups. And we, as we split these grenades, the idea was the flashbang was that grenade, the utility grenade, that you had to make a choice. Am I going to obscure the player's point of view and let my team like run around and do things I need to do? Or am I going to try to stun the players so I can push them with my shotgun and kill them or do whatever I need to do to break up this, this you know, setup that they have? Um, without that uh, grenade in the mix, it's for certain setups in King of the Hill, it can be really problematic to be able to like break out of that. Um, and just other game modes as well. I'll just focus on that one because you know, more, more people are playing that one than the other right now. Um, we wanted to bring it back in in a state where it was no longer going like, to give you, a, you know, basically a seizure when the light went off and do a lot of things that, you know, in terms of your audio and other effects that made it you kind of sick on your stomach and you don't want to get hit by five of them in a row. So we're trying to find a balance for that grenade where it still does a job it needs to do when it comes to stunning the player, but make it where it's a skill-based throw. Um, we need to look at the radius a little bit more because I feel like we may have shrunk it a little too much, but we're, we're going to continue to look at that. Um, and does a little less when it comes to distracting the player, so it doesn't have a full screen flash, the audio sounds a lot lower, so hopefully it's not as grating on your nerves. So we feel like it's in a much better place to do the job it needs to do without being overpowered or really annoying for the person that's getting hit by it. But that said, we're continuing to watch feedback, and if there's something there that needs to like be retooled, we'll continue to look at it. Have you considered making the hammer burst a main loadout weapon again? <laughs> oh not man, I hope not, tuning. because all I know is like right when I first joined Gear is like it felt like as soon as people knew who I was, all I was was like like people spamming me about like the five stack of hammer burst wielders that were just shredding people. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the good old bad days. I've kind of pushed that in my brain. But uh yeah, so no plans currently to bring back the hammer burst into the main loadout. Um, the tuning right now, it's meant to be a powerful secondary weapon. Uh, it's it, The value of the like damage as well as what it can actually do to players when it comes to stopping power is focused on one or two players at most having it on the map rather than having everyone potentially having it. So with the way it is right now, no. And there's no, not been a lot of talk about changing the loadout weapons from the, the Lancer, uh, Nasher, Snub, and Smoke Flash uh, choice. There you go. Do you consider to add a respawn system to Gridiron uh, as you did... An escalation. No, Gridiron was meant to be a single life mode. I mean, it was a lot of your idea. You spearheaded that. Do you want to talk to a little bit more about sort of the the intention of Gridiron and and you know and kind of are you and are there changes planned? I don't know. Like, is there anything that you'd like to add or update to Gridiron? Yeah. So we had some feedback both from um, just general public and from folks from the esports crew that have been playing it in tournaments. And so we have a few things we're looking at making changes to. It's stuff that kind of steadily going on in the background um, and I'm not sure of the timeline and when we'll actually able to bring it out for testing but the idea is once we made some changes to both the weapon placement and a few other tweaks to a few tuning and mechanical changes we'll bring it back out as a uh, we'll bring out that version as a, as a feature list to be able to get feedback from the public on so it's something we're continuing to iterate on we knew when we brought it out like we were happy with the gameplay, but we wanted people to experience it and kind of see where it went and then see if we can make improvements from there. Like the focus with Gridiron was really to bring back uh, a single play or single life mode that really kind of had that um, kind of the tenseness that you get with execution, but without the some of the issues with the stalemateiness and some of the encouragement to just kind of run away from fights and hide. Um, so yeah, our, our big hope was to be able to uh, bring single life gameplay into Gears 5 in a way that was refreshing and new. And I think we did that, but it's not by any means like perfect, and there's some tweaks that we want to try to make to it. Have you considered increasing the time it takes to switch from your Lancer to Nasher? It feels bad to push someone trying to Lancer you and surviving the push only to have them switch to their Nasher uh, extremely fast as soon as you're arriving. Mm. Yeah, we've looked at that a little bit. Um, we've not like settled on a, a tuning for that, a final one. I recognize that's a problem if it's too fast. Because you feel like you didn't punish that player for having their Lancer out. So we're trying to find the right balance where that player knows when to like actually change to be able to make a smart move and doesn't feel like they're, oh, no, no I can't possibly time this because it takes too long. Yeah. And also like treats the player that's attacking like correctly when it comes to, hey, they had an advantage they were trying to push. So like there's, there's a nice balance there considering the speed at which those things can happen. It can be tough to find that balance, and so we're working on that now. Will you ever have a ranked points decay? If I get to Masters and do not play another match, uh, the entire operation, will I lose points over time? 
Uh, there is currently nothing with point decay that's on the books that we're looking at. Um, we're looking overall at the health of the system, though, so it's something that could come up. We have some ideas about why you would want to continue playing that aren't just uh, to keep your rank from falling down that I'd like to be able to do, and that's what we're working on looking at now. So I guess it's kind of tied together. with We have some future plans that I think like would make sense to people like, oh, okay, that's why there's no decay. Um, but yeah, as we get there, uh, and we look at it longer, I can probably have a better answer in the future. Yeah. And that does it for the recap. As usual, the full stream is linked down below. Also down below are those shiny like and subscribe buttons, so be sure to hit those if you enjoy these recaps. I'm also going to have a link to our recent community discussion stream down there. I think it went really well, and after seeing the positive reception, I look forward to doing these semi-regularly in the near future. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll catch you next time.